Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, also known as PFAS or PFAS, are highly persistent and potentially toxic classes of chemicals. Why should we care? Well, they're added to cosmetics to increase their durability and their water resistance. The ingredient lists of most products do not disclose the presence of these fluorinated compounds. The manufacture, use, and disposal of cosmetics containing these are potential opportunities for health and ecosystem harm. Given their direct exposure routes, into people, so using them on the skin, we need better regulation to limit the widespread use of PFAS in cosmetics. So today I've made a video for you to understand what they are and why we should care. Welcome back to eye school with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so that you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. We talk a lot about skincare and beauty here, but everything has an eye spin because I'm an optometrist and eye doctor and I specialize in dry eye care. I have a ton of patients with dry eye. And so everything we look at, I'm always kind of going back to how does this affect the eyes and especially my dry eye patients. So what are PFAS? Her and poly fluoroalkyl substances are a diverse group of human-made chemicals. They're used in a wide range of consumer and industrial products. So which beauty products have PFAS in them? Certain PFAs are lotions, cleansers, nail polish, shaving cream, foundation, lipstick, eyeliner, eyeshadow, and mascara. And these are used in cosmetics to condition and smooth the skin, making it appear shiny or to affect product consistency and texture. Some PFAs may also be present in cosmetics unintentionally as a result of raw material impurities or due to the breakdown of PFAS ingredients that form other types of PFAs. I don't know how to call these. I've always just seen it written. I've never heard anyone say it. So what products are high in PFAs? One study found that more than half of US and Canadian cosmetics contain toxic chemicals. And researchers at the University of Notre Dame published the study in the journal Environmental Science and Technology Letters. Of the more than 230 commonly used cosmetics tested, 52% showed high levels of marker toxins for compounds called perfluoroalkyl or polyfluoroalkyl substances or PFAs. If we break down the study a bit, what we find is that foundations, long lasting lipsticks and eye products like waterproof mascaras contain some of the highest levels of PFAS and products used for eyebrows and concealer showed lower levels of the compounds. The study further breaks down which brands and product types showed the toxins. You might be surprised to find that some of the most popular brands also had more types of products in which PFAs were found. So does eyeshadow have PFAs with its proximity to the eyes, the meibomian glands, the eyelids? And does eyeliner have it going sometimes right on top of those precious meibomian glands? Well, yes. In fact, according to one Green Science Policy Institute's joint research, it was found that PFAs were present, but mostly unlabeled in popular eyeshadow and eyeliner makeup makeup products. In these eyeshadows, liners, creams, primers, and pencils category, they tested 43 different products and found 58% contained PFAs. The majority of products with high fluorine, including those confirmed to have PFAs, had no PFAs listed on the label. The study, published in the peer-reviewed journal Environmental Science and Technology Letters, was widely covered by the media, including Good Morning America, CNN, The Guardian, and The Washington Post. But is it safe to use makeup with PFAs in it? Well, scientists have linked PFAs to several health issues in recent years. Namely, they've been tied to cancer, thyroid disease, liver damage, decreased fertility, and even hormone disruption. It's believed that the PFAs in products like lipstick or mascara work their way into your body through orifices like your mouth or tear ducts and eventually build up in your organs. Research on PFAs and cosmetics. So what's out there? Well, there've been few studies on the presence of PFAs in cosmetics. Those studies that have been published found the concentration of certain PFAs in cosmetics as impurities or as ingredients range from the parts per billion level to the hundreds of parts per million range. Not all PFAs that may be found in cosmetics can be readily measured, however, because the specific fingerprint or analytical standard 
of the chemical compounds may not be available, making their detection and quantification challenging. There is also limited research on whether PFAs in cosmetics are absorbed through the skin at levels that could be harmful to human health. A 2018 study by Denmark's Environmental Protection Agency, the only risk assessment that has been evaluated has evaluated PFAS in cosmetics, was conducted on certain PFAs unintentionally present in cosmetics. And this study focused on five different types of PFA impurities that were detected in the largest number of different cosmetic products and in relatively high concentrations. The researchers determined that the levels in the individual products tested are unlikely to pose a health risk for consumers. And because data from this and other published studies are limited, they cannot be used to draw definitive conclusions about the potential health risks of PFAs in cosmetics. So in other words, the research is not totally there yet. It can, it can be hard to detect what is a PFA, what is not. We might not be able to know. And so we just don't totally know yet what the actual impact is. Can it be absorbed through the skin? How much is too much? These are all the questions that we ask ourselves about chemicals and makeup all the time, right? So you've heard me talk before about toxins in makeup, but what is the toxicity level, right? We can't just villainize every single compound. These chemicals are found in many different things and the dose and the route of administration sometimes makes the poison. So the PFAS in cosmetics can potentially penetrate your skin barrier and accumulate within the body, increasing risks of cancer and inflammation and other problems like that, maybe even increasing the risk of dry eye disease, but it's incredibly difficult to tell you exactly which products are okay, which ones are not. That's why even looking at the studies, I'm not going to call out which products were found in which study and which ones you should absolutely avoid. I think it's just incredibly important to be very discerning, always flip labels, and understand that these floral compounds, this fluoride type compounds, can potentially cause issues. And so if you are a dry eye patient and you're being exposed to PFAs in your cosmetics, know that you're also being exposed to it probably in your drinking water and environment. Um, and all kinds of things around you. These things are released in manufacturing, they're in our indoor air and our dust. If you're using anything in your house, like stain proofing for furniture, carpets, waterproofing for clothing, these types of things release these chemicals over time. It's even in our drinking water, so chemical plants making PFAS, product manufacturing plants, firefighting foam, landfills, and spreading of sludge have led to widespread contamination of drinking water in the U.S. and so probably our drinking water that's contaminated with with PFAS chemicals. It's also in cleaners, building materials, cosmetics, personal care products, and specialty products like ski wax, and that can give you direct exposure from product use. So if you're a dry eye patient and you're wondering if these chemicals could be affecting your dry eye, it's very possible that they are, but I don't know that I have great news for you because they're actually kind of everywhere. Sandwich wrappers, packaging, takeout containers, and can migrate to your food from all of these places. Now, how can you remove PFAS from skin? There's no definitive medical procedure that can clear per and polyfluoroalkyl substances from the body. However, the best step you can take is to remove the source of the exposure from your environment. So I don't mean to make you all just like glass toting, like chemical avoiding people, but in, in many, many cases, you may want to take a look at your environment and see what you're being exposed to. You can also test your blood levels to find out how much of it is in your body, how much you've been exposed to. I'm not sure how easy those types of tests are to get. I know as an eye doctor, I'm not ordering any lab tests looking for PFAS. Um, maybe I should be. Maybe this should be standard for patients in my dry eye clinic, but this might be something to ask your specialist about or your primary care. Now, PFAS, do they leave your body? Well, some of them leave the body slowly over time, mostly through your urine, you're excreting them. If you have kidney disease, you might not release it as quickly, right? But some leave the body in our blood, especially if you menstruate, right? So you might lose some then. You might excrete more PFAS than people who do not menstruate. You can also have PFAS leave the body in breast milk. Those who breastfeed may excrete more PFAS from their bodies than those who do not. And all of those factors could affect the 
PFAS levels measured in your blood. At this time, we're unable to use PFAS blood levels to decide what harmful effects might be possible, just like we were talking about in cosmetics, how much is too much, what kind is the worst, what level of blood exposure is too much. You know, how do we know? We really do not know all of that right now. I think the point of this video is to be aware of these chemicals in addition to some of the other chemicals I've talked about in cosmetics and skincare. It's important to know about PFAS and know that they may be impacting inflammation throughout your body as well as topically in the area where they are applied. And so going with vetted sources for your dry eye makeups, for, for your cosmetics, going with really clean skincare lines, flipping over those labels, brands like Eyes Are The Story, 2020 Beauty, these are all companies that are making a concentrated effort in bringing you eye safe beauty options that do not contain these PFAS compounds. So what is being done though, you know, widespread about PFAS in skincare and beauty products? So there's been a bipartisan effort to ban toxic chemicals like PFAS from being used in cosmetics, and that's being looked at by Congress now. So the No PFAS in Cosmetics Act was introduced by Senators Collins and Blumenthal and has backing from several other New England senators like New York's junior Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. According to a press release regarding the introduction of the bill, it would direct the FDA to propose and issue a rule banning the intentional addition of PFAS in cosmetics within 270 days of the bill's enactment and require a final rule to be issued 90 days later. Under current FDA regulations, companies are required to include ingredients that would explain why PFAS marker toxins are apparent in cosmetics. The study found 88% of those products failed to disclose that information though on their labels. So despite the regulations, it is still not happening. This bill has been buried in the Subcommittee on Health Action since June of 2021 and has a note on the front page of the bill that says, this bill requires the Department of Health and Human Services to issue and finalize a rule to ban the use of intentionally added perfluoroalkyl or polyfluoroalkyl substances in cosmetics. So at this time, we're not seeing any movement on this bill, but it is something certainly that our representatives in Congress are aware of and is something that they're working working to maybe take some action on. Now this is gonna help from a regulatory standpoint, but for the time being, you can reach out to your senators to feel free to pressure them along in the process and try and get something like this passed. So there are a number of cosmetics that are free of PFAS, and I found a resource for you that seems to be trusted, up to date, easy to understand, and something you can share with friends and family, so you can make changes in your healthcare routines, but also across your entire life. So it's called PFAS Central org pretty simple I'll make sure to link it down below it provides current and curated information about PFAS including press peer-reviewed scientific articles meetings job listings there's consumer information there's all kinds of content that is a partnership between the Green Science Policy Institute and the Social Science Environmental Health Institute at Northeastern University one of the pages I really like on this site is their PFAS free products page it's an outstanding resource with links they have PFAS free products for outdoor gear, apparel, shoes, baby products, furniture, foodware, carpet, rugs, textiles, home maintenance, and of course the reason we're here and why you have stuck with me this long, if you have, you might have just gone to the comments and found this already, but cosmetics and personal care products including even like your dental floss, they're going to tell you which one is free of all the things. Um, they also list a number of retailers, so different retailers that have a commitment to PFAS free products and they range. You're gonna see Whole Foods on there, you're gonna see different skincare companies and things like that. So definitely check out the website and get more information on PFAS compounds and how to more importantly avoid them and get them out of your life in every aspect possible. So that is gonna be it for today's iSchool lesson. I really saved the good stuff for the end on you today, but now you understand what they are hopefully and unfortunately that you're constantly exposed to them. They are in every single kind of cosmetic and beauty products. They are all over the place and they do potentially have implications for your dry eye, for your systemic inflammation, 
and can cause issues. And so check out that resource I gave you. Make sure to comment down below if you have found that your dry eye is worse when exposed to these PFAS compounds. Um, let me know what you've done to rid your house of these PFAS compounds and if you feel so moved, make sure to reach out to your local congressional folks to advocate for this act once you vet it and make sure you feel like it's a good idea. So yeah, that's it for today's iSchool. I appreciate you sticking with me. I know it can be very long-winded at times, but the good stuff was at the end and um, I hope you got something out of it. That's it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed.